We're going to now turn to a class of problems referred to as related rates problems. In all of the natural sciences and many of the social and behavioral sciences, quantities that are related but vary with time are encountered. And problems involving rates of change of related variables are referred to as related rates problems. In such problems, we usually will want to find the rate of change of one of the variables at a given time, while the rates of change of the other variables are known. The main idea here is that rates of change are derivatives, and by differentiating a relationship between variables, usually with respect to time, we obtain a new relationship between the variables and their rates of change. So let's see a first example. When throwing a stone into the water, we get a circular ripple that spread. If the front wave moves away from the point where the stone entered water at 0.5 meter per second, we want to know how fast is the area of the ripple increasing when the front wave is 30 meters away from the point where the stone entered water. So here is the pond. We throw a stone in, into the water and here is a point of entry into the water. And we get a circular ripple to spread. Now we need to interpret the text and in particular one piece of information that is given to us is that the front wave moves at 0.5 meter per second. The front wave here means the points that are on the outer circle. So the outer circle moves away at 0.5 meter per second. And this is the rate of change of the position of the front wave, which we can see as the distance to the entry point in the water, in other words, the radius of the outer circle. So because this is a quantity that changes with time, we give it a name. So let's call capital R the radius of the outer circle. And this piece of information that we've underlined means that the rate of change of this radius with respect to time is 0.5 meter per second. In other words, the derivative of r, when r is viewed as a function of time, is 0.5 meter per second. Now what are we looking for? We want to know how fast is the area of the ripple increasing when the front wave is 30 meters away. In other words, we are looking for the rate of change of the area of the ripple. So we need to introduce again a variable for this area of the ripple. So let's call that capital A. That's the area of the disk enclosed by the outer circle. This is again something that vary, varies with time and what we want to know is its rate of change or derivative with respect to time. So now we have two quantities that vary with time. We know the rate of change of one, we want to know the rate of change of the other. To do that, we first need to relate these two variables, these two quantities that vary with time. In this case, the geometry is simple. We're looking for the area of a disk of radius r, and of course, the area is pi multiplied by r squared. In order to derive from this relationship between a and r, a relationship between the rates of change, we differentiate this equation with respect to time. a is a function of time, so on the left hand side I just get the derivative of a with respect to time. On the right hand side I have the multiplicative constant pi multiplied by the derivative of r square. Here r is a function of time, so r square is the square of a function, so to differentiate that I need to use the chain rule. And I'm going to get 2r multiplied by the derivative of the function r. Now, we get the rate of change of a with respect to time as a function of r and the rate of change of r. We know the rate of change of r and we are asked to find dA over dt when r is 30 meters. Now we can plug in every value. Get 2 pi times 30 times 0.5 in other words, 30 pi meter per second. Okay, so let's look over some general guidelines. 
Here we have drawn a picture to try to see what is going on and in general for this related rate, rates problem in many cases we will have to relate the various variables using a geometric argument and so drawing a picture whenever it's relevant is always a good idea. In interpreting the text we will have to identify the variables or in other words the quantities that vary with time and assign symbols to them. In the previous example these variables were the radius of the outer circle and the area of the corresponding disk. We need to also identify and interpret the rates of change as derivatives. So for these variables that we have introduced, we look at their derivative with respect to time, and in the text we should have some information on that. Specifically, some of these rates of change should be given to us, and at least one of them is what we need to find. So these are things that we need to identify. Then we want to express relationships among these variables as equations. In the previous case, the equation in question was that the area is pi multiplied by the radius squared if we're looking at a disk of radius r. Now this is relations among variables and what we're interested in is finding the rate of change of one of these variables in function of other known rates of change. To do that, we differentiate the equation or equations that we have found at the previous step with respect to time. And then we solve for the unknown rate and substitute the numerical values to obtain the value of the rate we're looking for. Let's look at one more example. Suppose you stand on the edge of a dock that is six feet above water level and you put a rope that is attached at water level to a boat at a constant rate of two feet per second. We want to know at what speed is the boat approaching the dock when it is 20 feet from the dock and also when it is 10 feet away from the dock. And you see that we're pulling the boat at a constant rate so you might think that pulling the boat, pulling the rope, sorry, at a constant rate, the boat is going to move at a constant speed. We will see that this is not the case. So here is the situation. And if we analyze the text, we see that we pull a rope at a constant rate of 2 feet per second. Okay, so this is a rate of change, and specifically, this is the rate of change on the picture of the length of rope between the boat and the man pulling the rope. This length here, we therefore um, introduce a variable for this length, let's call it L, and the piece of information that is given to us is that the rate of change of this length with respect to time is negative 2 feet per second. Why is it negative? because this length is decreasing as we are pulling the boat towards the dock. The other part that is important in the text is the question. We want to know at what speed is a boat approaching the dock at a particular moment. At what speed means the speed is the rate of change and specifically the rate of change of the position of the boat. The boat is moving along the straight line towards the dock and its position can be given relative to any fixed point. Here the natural choice is to consider its position as its distance to the dock. So let's introduce x, the distance from the boat to the dock. And what we want to know is the speed of the boat, in other words the rate of change of this distance, or the derivative of x when x is considered as a function of time. So how do we proceed? You see that in this red triangle we have a right triangle so we can use the Pythag Pythagorean theorem in order to relate x and l. Remember this was the next step after we identify the quantities varying with time and the rates of change. We need to find a relationship between these variables, in this case x and l. So because of the Pythagorean theorem, we get that x squared plus 6 squared is l squared. 
and to obtain a relationship between the rates of change, we differentiate this with respect to time and obtain that 2x multiplied by the rate of change of x is 2l multiplied by the rate of change of l. Indeed, x and l are both functions of time, so to differentiate x squared and l squared, in both cases we use the chain rule because x and l are functions. On the other hand, 6 squared is just a constant, so its derivative is 0. We solve for the unknown rate, in other words, dx over dt, and we obtain l over x multiplied by the rate of change of l. Since we are looking for the speed of the boat when it is 20 feet from the dock, we know dl over, d, uh, DL over dt and we know x. l, on the other hand, is not given to us, but we know how it is related to x. Because of the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus 36 is l squared. In other words, we can replace l by the root of x squared plus 36. And now, when we are 20 feet from the dock, we can plug in values 20 for x and negative 2 for dl over dt, and we obtain negative 2.09 feet per second. On the other hand, when the boat is 10 feet away from the dock, we can plug in x equal 10 and dl over dt is negative 2, and this time we get negative 2.33 feet per second. And you see that the boat is accelerating as we're moving closer to the dock. Now move to the next video to see more examples of related rates problems.